Hi and welcome. This course is all about moving your WordPress website from one web host to another. The techniques explained in this course can be applied to any web host. And here are the scenarios that we'll be covering throughout this course. Scenario 1. We have developed a small website on our local host and we are moving it to SiteGround Hosting. We'll be using the free duplicator plugin to get this job done. Scenario 2. We have a small website on SiteGround Hosting and we are moving it to Kinsta Hosting without downtime. Now, we'll be using a premium plugin called WPDB Migrate Pro to get this job done. Scenario 3. We have a big WooCommerce website on Liquid Web and we are moving it to Kinsta. Now, since this is a big website, to avoid any timeout errors that we face with plugins, we'll be migrating the site manually using SSH and WPCLI. Thanks for watching this introduction and I hope I'll see you inside. Migrating a WordPress website simply means moving your website content and files from one web host to another. WordPress stores your website's text content and settings inside the MySQL database. And when I meant files, I mean the files inside the themes, plugins, and the uploads directories. And these directories are stored inside the WP content directory. So, in order to migrate your WordPress website to a different host, all you have to do is migrate the MySQL database, migrate the whole WP content directory, and change the URLs inside the database if there is a change in the domain name. There are three approaches to migrate your WordPress website. Number one, using a plugin like WPDB Migrate Pro or Duplicator. Number two, manually moving the files and database with the help of tools like FTP, SSH, PHP Madmin, etc. And number three, using a combination of both the above techniques. For example, migrating the MySQL database with WPDB Migrate Pro plugin and moving the files inside the WP content directory manually because sometimes it takes a lot of time to move them with a plugin. The approach we choose depends on the amount of time you have, the website size, and the restrictions that the web host might impose on us. Manual approach is error prone based on your skill level and takes a lot more effort compared to a plugin based approach. But plugin based approach faces timeout errors if the site size is big. On the other hand, there will be no timeout errors in the manual approach. So, a plugin based approach is ideal if the site size is small and manual approach is ideal for bigger sites. At the end of the day, it's all about making the migration go smoothly without any errors by saving us a good amount of time. Saving time while migrating the site is a luxury that we can afford by purchasing a premium plugin like WPDB Migrate Pro or Duplicated Pro. Because these plugins, once they are activated, they will do the job for us. All we have to do is sit back and relax. On the other hand, if you don't have money to purchase these premium plugins, you have to master the manual approach. Manual approach does the pixel perfect job if you master it correctly. All right, here's the first scenario. We have developed a small website locally and we are launching it using SiteGround hosting so that the world can see it. Simply put, we are moving our website from local environment to production environment. And we're gonna do this in just three steps, okay? First, we'll prepare the production environment on SiteGround by creating an empty website and by pointing our domain name to it. If we do not create an empty website, we can neither point the domain name nor upload the files from our local host. Okay, to begin with, I'm already inside the SiteGround hosting dashboard and I'm gonna click on the add new site button to start creating the empty website. I'm now presented with three options for the domain name. I already purchased a domain name using GoDaddy, so I'm gonna choose existing domain option. Next, I'm gonna enter my existing domain name. And as soon as I do that, SiteGround is warning me saying that this domain name is not registered with them and I'm okay with that. So I'm gonna click the continue button to start creating my empty website. And since we are migrating the website using the duplicator plugin, we do not want to install a fresh WordPress site. I'm not really interested in migrate website option either. So I'm gonna click on the skip and create empty site button to continue with the process. And finally, I'm not really interested in a site scanner. So I'm gonna click on the finish button to complete the process of creating the empty website. Now, SiteGround is gonna take some time to create the website and once the site is created, we get to access the IP address of our website. And there we go, the site is now created. Next, I'm gonna click on the manage site button to access the IP address of the website. Now, I'm gonna copy the IP address and then I'm gonna go back to the GoDaddy website to start the process of mapping the domain name to the IP address. Domain mapping is done by adding an A record with the IP address of the website to the domain name we purchased from GoDaddy. So in order to add the A record, 
I'm going to manage the DNS of my domain by clicking on the DNS link. And in here, I'm going to add a new A record which points to the IP address of the website which we just copied previously and I'm going to click on the save button to finish the mapping process. Now, domain mapping usually takes anywhere between 1 minute to 24 hours. Most of the time it takes less than 15 minutes. So now, if I go ahead and type the domain name inside the browser, it is indeed pointed to an empty website hosted on SiteGround. And SiteGround is displaying this neat coming soon page. We'll be replacing this page with our locally developed WordPress website next. Step 2 is all about creating a package which contains the database and the files of our website using the duplicated plugin and then uploading the package to the SiteGround hosting using the file manager interface. As you can see, I'm already logged inside the admin dashboard of my local WordPress site. Next, I'm going to install the duplicated plugin by going to plugins, add new, and in here, I'm going to search for the duplicated plugin and then install it. Next, I'm going to go to the duplicator and then click on the packages to start the process. And in here, I'm going to click on the create new button to bring up the package options. The first option is the package name. I'm okay with the default name because it is unique, but you can also name it whatever you want. Next comes the storage option. By default, it displays the location where the package is getting stored locally. You can also upload it to the cloud services like Dropbox, Amazon, etc. by upgrading to the pro version of the duplicated plugin. I'm okay with the default option. Next comes the archive options. Under the files tab, the archive only the database option will let you create a package which contains just a database file by excluding the files of the website completely. This option is only good if you're just trying to migrate or backup the database by excluding the files altogether. I'm going to not check this option because we are performing a full website migration. Next, you can enable the file filters if you want to exclude certain directories from the final package. For example, if Git and Node.js are part of your website development process, you should exclude the directories related to those technologies from the final package and this is the option that you should use to exclude them. I'm going to keep this filter disabled because I don't want to exclude any directories from the final package. Duplicator plugin also gives you the fine control to exclude certain file types and certain files from the final package. But I'm not going to use these options either. Next, if you visit the database tab, you are allowed to exclude certain tables from the final package. The tables marked with the red color and asterisk are mandatory tables which you shouldn't exclude. Now, this is a powerful option. So use it only if you know what you're doing. I want all the tables, so I'm not going to touch anything. To summarize, I did not utilize any settings under the archive panel. Finally, we have the installer options. In here, the first thing I want to do is set a password for the archive package. So I'm going to click on the enable password protection option and I'm going to enter password to protect the archive. Next comes the pre-fills. If you want to, you can enter the MySQL database details of the production server. But since we did not create the database on the production server yet, I'm going to deal with these options a bit later. Pro version of the duplicated plugin allows you to connect to your production server cPanel, but I never use this option personally. So I'm happy to manually upload the package myself. Lastly, I'm going to look at the password again to avoid forgetting it and then click next to proceed forward with the process of creating the package. Now, Duplicator goes ahead and scans the entire local environment including the website files and comes up with the analysis. This analysis includes a lot of information about our local server setup like PHP version, WordPress version, etc. However, the most important piece of information is migration status. This tells if the package created can be used for migration or not. If you notice, for the sections, the status information is located to the right hand side of the screen. It is important that all sections should have good status in order to guarantee a proper migration. If some of them are not good, you have to fix those individual sections so that duplicated plugin can create a usable package. It looks like my package status is good, so I'm going to click on the build button to finish the process of creating the package. Now. Duplicated plugin will go ahead and create package for us and it contains two files, the installer file and the archive file. We need to download both the files, so I'm going to click on the one click download link to download both the files. And finally, I'm going to upload both the downloaded files to the root directory of a production server. Usually, the root directory is named as public underscore html. So, 
I'm going to go back to the file manager of the SiteGround hosting and I'm going to double click on the public underscore HTML directory to enter into it and we'll click on the file upload button to upload both the files from my local computer. All right, now that the upload is complete, the final step that we have to perform is to extract the package. All right, now that the upload is complete, the final step that we have to perform is to extract the package. And we can do this by accessing the installer.php file inside the browser. Since these files are uploaded to the public and questionable directory, we can access the installer.php file by typing the domain name slash installer.php and then hit enter. And if you remember, we have password protected the package file. So I'm going to enter the password and then hit submit to enter the test process of the package. Now Duplicator went ahead and performed some checks and it looks like the package has passed all the checks. If your package failed some tests in here but not in the local environment, then there are some problems with your web host. So if there are any errors, go through all the sections and fix them. Anyway, since my package has passed all the tests, and there are no errors or warnings, I'm going to agree to the terms of the duplicator plugin and click on the next button to extract the package. All right, now that the package is extracted, it's time to deal with the database settings. If you remember, we skipped these settings during step two. Now we can't. The first option we have to deal with is host. For this option, usually 99% of the time, the value is localhost. But if that is not the case with your web host, then Duplicator will throw an error and then you have to contact your web host to get the actual answer. Next comes database and its user credentials. We did not create a database on our production server yet. So let's do that now. I'm going to go back to the site ground and then click on the MySQL link. In here, I'm going to click on the create database button to create the database and then I'm going to copy the database name to my sticky notes on my local computer. However, Creating a database is not enough. We have to create a user who can access this database with all the privileges. So I'm going to click on the create user to enter the users tab and then click on the create user button again to create the user. Now, as you can see, SiteGround automatically generated both username and password for the database user. This applies to most of the web hosts. Anyway, I'm going to copy both the username and password to the sticky note. And finally, I'll come back to the duplicate plugin screen. And in here, first I'm going to copy the database name and then the database user and its password. All right, great. Now let's test the database connection by clicking on the test connection button. And bang, the connection failed. But why is that? If we check out the verify host connection section, it says that the credentials are working just fine. But where is the actual problem? From what I can see, the problem is with the database visibility. It looks like I did a mistake. And the mistake was, although I created the database and a user, but I did not assign the user to the database itself. And in order to achieve that, first, I'm going to click on the manage access button for accessing the options that are specific to our database user. Next, in here, I want to assign the newly created database to this user using the database name option. And it looks like the correct database is pre-selected and the next thing we have to ensure is that we are granting all privileges over the database to this user. Since all the conditions are met, I'm going to click on the confirm button to finish the process. Now, if we go back to the duplicate screen and test the connection again, this time it passes. Yay! Anyway, now let's finish the database installation process by clicking on the next button. And as soon as we click on the next button, we'll get a confirmation pop-up and I'm gonna say OK to proceed forward with the setup stage. In this stage, Duplicate allows us to update the URLs inside our database. Along with the website content, our site database will also contain the URL of the site and WordPress relies on it to let you access the website using the correct URL. And if you mess this up, you might no longer access the website altogether. Remember that we are migrating the database that we have created locally to the production environment. Now, because we are moving our website from local environment to the production environment, the URL for accessing our website will change, right? 
Previously, it was dose.local and now it is doseapp.in. The thing is, Duplicator is smart enough to detect this URL change and it updates the database with a new URL automatically. I'm also not going to touch any settings inside the wp-config file. I'm also not interested in creating a new user account because when we migrate the database, if necessary, we are changing the URL by keeping everything else the same. That means we can log into the production server's WordPress site by using the user account from the local environment. Anyway, now that everything looks good, I'm going to click on the next button to finish the migration process. The site migration is now successful. The first thing we have to do after successful migration is remove any files related to the migration. In our case, it's the two files that we have uploaded to the public and squishyml directory. And the duplicated plugin will clean up these files once we log into the admin dashboard of a newly migrated WordPress site. So I'm going to click on the admin login to access the login screen and then I'm going to enter my login credentials. And there we go. The login is now successful and duplicated plugin says it has removed all the files related to the migration. Finally, let's review the site on the front end to see if everything is okay. I usually go to each and every page on the site. Sometimes you might get 404 page not found errors and you can fix it by updating the permalinks. In my case, Everything looks fine and I now declare that the migration is completely successful. And congratulations for finishing your first migration. If there are any errors, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer them when I get the chance. We have a small website on SiteGround and we are moving it to Kinsta Hosting without downtime. We'll be using the premium WPDB Migrate Pro plugin for this job. And we're going to accomplish this in four easy steps, okay? Step 1. Since we are moving our website to Kinsta, we have to install a fresh WordPress site on our new web server and then install WPDB Migrate Pro plugin along with its add-ons. As you can see, I'm already inside the Kinsta hosting dashboard. So I'm going to go to site and in here, I'm going to click on the add your first site button. This will bring up a pop-up with options to install WordPress. The technique that involves WPDB Migrate Pro plugin works only if we install WordPress upfront on the new web host. This plugin doesn't work with an empty environment. If you want to make the migration work with empty environment, then your only options are duplicate and backup buddy plugins along with the manual approach. Back to the action now. Since I don't want any downtime, I don't want to map the domain name yet. If we leave this option empty, Kinsta will install WordPress with the temporary domain name. Next, I'm going to enter the details of the WordPress site And finally, I'm going to click on the Add Site button to create the WordPress site. Now, Kinsta is going to take some time for creating the website. And there we go. Our site is now created. You can now access the website in two ways. Using the IP address, using the temporary domain name created by the Kinsta. So, let's preview our site using the temporary domain name. Alright, the default site looks good. Next, I'm going to log in into the WordPress dashboard. Now that we are logged in successfully, the next thing I want to do is go to Delicious Brain website to download the WPDB Migrate Pro plugin along with its add-ons. As the name suggests, the WPDB Migrate Pro plugin initially started out as a database migrator. But as the development of the plugin progressed, the plugin became a full website migrator with its add-ons. Simply put, we are trying to migrate the entire website, right? So I'm going to have to download the main plugin and the add-ons too. Remember, the main plugin will only allow us to migrate the database. Anyway, first, I'm going to download the main plugin. Next, I'm going to scroll down a little bit to find the add-ons. As you can see, there are four add-ons right now. In order to migrate the media files of our site, we have to use the media files add-on. This add-on will take care of migrating the uploads directory inside the WB content directory. And in order to migrate the plugin and theme files, we need to use the theme and plugin files add-on. We're not migrating multi-site installations, so we do not need the multi-site tools add-on. We're also not migrating manually, so we do not need WPCLA add-on. So I'm going to simply download the theme and plugin files add-on along with the media files add-on. Remember that these add-ons are plugins too. 
So I'm gonna have to install them just like any other plugin. Anyway, now that we have downloaded the plugins, let's install them by going back to the website on Kinsta. And in here, I'm gonna go to plugins, add new, and then click on the upload button to install the main plugin first. Now that I have installed the main WPDB Migrate Pro plugin, I'm gonna quickly install both the add-ons that we have downloaded. All right, next we have to enter the license key for the plugin to start using it. So. I'm gonna go back to my Delicious Brains account and in here, I'm gonna copy the license key. I'm gonna come back to the admin dashboard. In here, I'm gonna click on the enter your license key link to activate the license. The way this plugin works is, it can pull the entire website content from another website and similarly, it can push the entire website content to another website. I'm gonna enable both push and pull permissions. You can enable only one of the permissions if you want to. For example, if both the websites are on the internet, you can either choose to push or pull. It doesn't matter. But you cannot pull website content from the local host because the website is not on the internet. If that is the case, if you want to move your local website to a host on the internet like Kinsha, then you should use the push functionality from the local host rather than trying to pull the website from the local host. Simply put, you can push your website from local host to the production host, but you cannot pull local website content from the production host. Step 2. Now that we have installed the plugin on the new web host, it's time we do the same on the old web host. Simply put, we have to install the plugin and its add-ons in both places. So I'm gonna go back to the admin dashboard of the old web host to do just that. Step 3. Establish a connection between two sites using the connection URL. Now that we have installed the plugins on both the websites, it's time to establish the connection between them with the help of connection URL provided by the WPD Migrate Pro plugin. I'm already inside the admin dashboard of the website which needs to be migrated. And in here, the first thing I'm going to do is copy the connection info. Next, I'm going to go back to the newly installed WordPress site and in here, I'm going to go to the Migrate tab. Now, I want to pull everything from the website hosted on SiteGround, right? So I'm gonna select pull, and as soon as I select it, the plugin will give us an option to enter the connection info. I'm gonna paste the connection info that I have previously copied, and there we go. The connection is now successful because the plugin has presented us with the URL and the public directory path of the website hosted on SiteGround. And it is also saying that when the migration is done, the old site's URL and directory path will be replaced with the new ones. The next option we have to talk about is what database tables would be migrating from the other side. Here is the WordPress database structure. As you can see, WordPress stores a particular piece of content inside a particular table. For example, WordPress stores your blog post content inside the WP underscore post table. It stores the users inside the WP users table. So when we are migrating the site, we have to migrate all these tables. If we don't do that, the newly migrated site could crash or could leave behind some important settings and content. It is because of this fact, the WPDB Migrate Pro plugin is saying that, hey, the other website's database table prefix is WP underscore, and I'm gonna migrate all the tables with WP underscore prefix. So unless you're performing a cleanup, most of the time, we would be migrating all the tables. And since I want to migrate all the tables, I'm okay with the migrate all tables with prefix WP underscore option. But if you want to exclude only some tables, then go with migrate only selected tables option and pick just the tables that you want to migrate. Next, I'm not excluding any post types, so I'm gonna have to leave this option as is. Then comes the media files option. I want to compare and then download. Because if a particular file already exists on this site for some reason, I don't want to download it again. But this is a rare situation though. 
Next, I want to migrate the theme files and I'm going to select the active theme and the default theme by excluding others. If you don't want to migrate the active theme, then prepare the fact that your site would look completely different after the migration. You don't really want that, do you? Next, I'm going to select all the plugins except the duplicated plugin because I don't need it on the migrated site. The WPDB Migrate Pro plugin also lets you exclude files and directories that you don't want to migrate. For example, if you use Git and Node.js programs as part of your development process, then you don't need them on the production site, right? So WPDB Migrate Pro excludes them by default. Unlike duplicated plugin, you don't have to enter the full path. And finally, I'm going to hit the pull button to start the migration process. Now sit back and relax while the WPDB Migrate Pro plugin does the whole migration for you. The premium migration plugins are there for a reason. I'm going to fast forward this. And there we go. If you are seeing the WordPress login pop-up, it means the migration is successful. The reason behind this login pop-up is, once the migration is done, the admin user that we have created when installing a fresh site on Kinsta no longer exists. Along with the other tables, the fresh site WP users table is now replaced with the tables of the website hosted on SiteGround. So we have to log in back using the admin credentials of the old website hosted on SiteGround. So I'm going to enter the admin credentials of those app.in website and we are now logged in again to see the message pull from those app.in website is now complete. And that's all it takes to migrate a WordPress website using WPDB Migrate Pro plugin. Now let's test this site on the front end by visiting each and every page. Alright, everything looks good. I can also see that there are no console errors. WPDB Migrate Pro plugin did a pretty decent job in my opinion. Now, if I visit the old site on SiteGround, you can see that I can still access the website with the original domain name. Since we have the same website on both the web hosts, looking exactly in the same way, if we now map our domain name to the new web host on Kinsta, the visitors should be able to access website with no downtime at all. Although it takes time for the new domain mapping to take effect, the visitors will be accessing the old site until the mapping is done. And when the mapping is actually done, they don't really know that they're accessing the site on the new host. Step 4. Map the domain name to the new web host, Kinsta. Now that the migration is done, it's time to map the domain name to the new web host. We can achieve this in three sub-steps. Step A. So I'm going to go to Kinsta hosting dashboard and I'm going to click on the add domain button. This will bring up a pop-up and in here, I'm going to add the actual domain name. But I don't want to mark it as primary domain name yet. Next, I'm going to copy the IP address of our Kinsta server. Step B. Now that I have the IP address of the new server, I'm going to go to GoDaddy website because the DNS of the domain name is being managed by GoDaddy. I'm going to log in. And in here, I'm going to click on the DNS button to access the DNS records of the domain. As you can see, currently the A record of the domain is pointing to SiteGround server's IP address. I'm going to replace it with Kinsta server's IP address. And finally, I'm going to come back to Kinsta and I'm going to make those app.in as the primary domain name because Kinsta is currently using a temporary domain name to let us access the website. And this is exactly how the domain mapping is achieved without website downtime. When we are migrating the website and the domain name without downtime, it's important to figure out if the domain mapping is actually done. The verification is important because we don't accidentally end up updating the content on the old website. Because technically, if the domain mapping is not done, we could be accessing the old website, right? So I'm going to verify the domain mapping using a DNS lookup tool called mxtoolbox.com. In here, I'm going to enter the domain name and it gives us the IP address of the server that the website is hosted on. And it looks like the resulting IP address is matching with the IP address of my Kinsta server. So mapping is now done and the migration is 100% complete. Alright, 
we have a big WooCommerce website on Liquid Web. It has more than 200 orders, 3000 plus media files, 30 plus activated plugins, and 3000 plus products. And we are moving it to Kinsta using the manual method with command line tools. Premium or not, we cannot rely on a plugin to get this job done because they're not built for migrating a site which is 3 gigabytes plus. So, like it or not, we have to master the manual technique when we are moving a mountain. We're gonna master this manual technique in 12 easy and tiny steps, okay? From step 1 through 5, we will create a compressor version of the WP content directory and then we'll export the database. From step 6 through 11, we will move these files to the new web host, extract the compressor version of the WP content directory and finally, we will import the database. Step 1. Login into old web host server using SSH. If you already know about SSH, you can skip the next one minute of this video. Anyway, no matter where you host your website, your website will be hosted on a web server provided by the web hosting company. And a web server is nothing but a computer with no graphical user interface. Just like any other computer, a web server will have a file system and it allows you to perform file operations like creating a zip file, moving a file from one directory to another, and delete the file if necessary. The only difference is, you have to perform all the above actions using commands instead of right clicks, left clicks that we usually do on our computer. And Linux operating system is known for its infamous command line to enter those commands. But in order to use the command line, you have to first log into your web server. Now, we protect our computers with the user account, right? A web server will have a user account too. And since web server is a remote computer provided by the web hosting company, we have to use something called Secure Shell SSH to log into your web server securely. Just like Liquid Web, your web host will provide SSH credentials for accessing your web server. If you cannot find them, ask the support team from your web hosting company. If you're on a Mac, you can use the terminal as the SSH client. If you're on Windows, you should use PuTTY. Here is the breakdown of the SSH command. SSH, user account, at the rate, host address. And the host address could be the IP address of the server or the domain name. Anyway, Liquid Web has already provided me with the user credentials in the format of user account at the rate domain name. So I'm gonna copy this entire command and I'm gonna open up the terminal inside my Mac. I'm gonna paste it and I want to do a small change. I'm gonna replace SFTP with SSH. That works. Now, as soon as I hit enter, it will ask for a password. So I'm gonna go back to the Liquid Web for asking the password. And I'm gonna come back and paste it in here and hit enter. And we are now inside our web server. The login was successful. What we are seeing right now is the command line. We now have access to our entire web server, so be careful. We are currently inside the home directory of the user account. And this is equivalent to the desktop on our personal computers. In the world of Linux command line, tilde symbol represents the home directory. Anyway, let's quickly see the contents of the home directory by typing ls space dash a. While ls is responsible for listing the directory contents, dash a is responsible for allowing us to view the hidden files inside the directory. And finally, our website files are located under public underscore HTML directory. This is same for the most of the web servers. Step 2. I'm going to create a directory named backups using mkdir command. So I'm going to type mkdir space backups. And if I now list the contents of the home directory again using ls command, I now see the backups directory too. We will be placing both the compressed version of the WP content directory and our site's database inside this newly created backups directory. Step 3. Compressing the WP content directory using the tar command. First, I'm going to go inside the WP content of our WordPress site. As I said before, our site files are located inside public underscore HTML directory. So, first, I'm going to enter the public underscore HTML directory using the change directory command. So, I'm going to put in cd space public underscore HTML. Next, I'm going to cd space WP hyphen content. Now that I'm inside the WP content directory, I'm going to use the tar command to create a compressor version of the WP content directory. Here is how the tar command works. tar space options space destination directory with the file name of the compressor file space 
source directory. So I'm going to type tar space dash cf. Tar command works in both ways. We can either compress a directory using it or extract it. And dash cf says to compress instead of extracting. And the destination directory is backups, right? So I'm going to put home directory slash backups slash wp content dot tar. And the source directory is wp content directory, right? And since we are already inside it, we can use dot instead of entering the path for the wp content directory. If tilde symbol represents the home directory, then dot represents the current directory in Linux world. Now I'm going to hit enter to create the compressed version of the wp content directory. It's going to take some time. And there we go. The compressor file is now created. Step 4. Using the WPCLI command to export the database of our WordPress site. WPCLI is a command line tool that will help us manage our WordPress site from the command line. Simply put, it allows us to manage plugins and themes, update core WordPress software, install WordPress, manage database operations like importing and exporting it, change the URLs inside the database, upload media files in a bulk way, resize images in a bulk way, check the performance of the website, and a lot more. And to get our job done, we are only interested in two features from that lot. Importing and exporting database, change the URLs inside the database. And WPCLI doesn't shift with Linux operating system by default. But most of the modern web hosts like SiteGround, Kinsta, Liquid Web, etc. will come with WPCLI installed on their web server. If that is not the case with your web host, you have to install it yourself. And in order to install WPCLI by yourself, you have to SSH into your web server with a user account that has all the privileges. Simply put, in the world of Linux, you need a user account with something called root access. Now, if your website is hosted on a shared web server, then I'm afraid that they're not going to give you a user account with root access because alongside with your website, your web server also contains websites of other clients, right? So they don't give you root access as a security measure. If you don't have root access and if WPCLI is directly installed on your web server, that is great. If not, then you have to import and export the database using a tool like phpMyAdmin. The shared hosting plan on SiteGround is the best example of this. Although they don't give you root access, their web server ships with WPCLI pre-installed. For the purposes of this course, both Kinsta and Liquid Web comes pre-installed with WPCLI. So I'm not going to install it. But if yours doesn't, I have provided instructions in the description of this video about how to install WPCLI. Now let's get back to action. Let's export our site database using WPCLI. And for the WPCLI command to work, we have to be inside the WordPress site's root directory or any other subdirectory inside the root directory. And currently, we are inside the WP content directory, right? So WPCLI command should work. Now, in order to export the database, I'm going to type WP space DB space export space and I want to export it to the backups directory we have created in step two. So I'm going to put home slash backups slash and I want to name the database file as dnk.sql. So I'm going to put dnk.sql. Next, I want to run this command with high privileges. So I'm going to put dash dash lo dash root. Now I use dash dash lo root for demonstration purposes only, but most of the time it's not necessary. Use of allo root is strongly discouraged and use it only if WPDB command throws an error complaining that you cannot export the database. The problem with it is, it is used as an attack vector for privilege escalation hacking technique. Anyway, I'm going to finally hit enter to export the database. And there we go. We have now exported our database successfully. Now let's go back to the backups directory to verify the files we have put in there. So I'm going to type cd space home slash backups. Next, I'm going to list the files inside this directory with their file sizes. And to do that, I'm going to put ls dash lh. While dash a modifier displays the hidden directories, dash lh modifier will display the contents of the directory with their file sizes. And as expected, we have our two files in here. As you can see, the size of the database is 51 MB and the size of the compressed version of the WP contents directory is 3.1 gigabytes. And they look right to me. Step 5. Now before we move these files to the new web host on Kinsta, 
we need to copy the full directory path to the backups directory by using step 8. Just to be sure, I'm going to visit the home directory and we'll enter into the backups directory again. Next, I'm going to enter the pwd command. And there we go, now we have the full directory path to the backups directory. And I'm going to copy this somewhere. Step 6. Next, I'm going to head back to Kinsta website and I'm going to log in. I'm going to go to site and in here, I'm going to click on add your first set button. This will bring up a pop-up with options to install WordPress. I'm going to enter the details of the WordPress site and finally, I'm going to click on the add site button to create the WordPress site. Now, Kinsta is going to take some time for creating this website and there we go. Our website is now created. Come on, let's preview it. Step 7. Log into the new server using SSH. Now, just like Liquid Web, Kinsta also provides us with the SSH credentials to access its server. So, I'm going to copy it, open up the terminal, and now I'm going to paste it and then I'm going to hit enter. As usual, it asks for the password. I'm going to come back to the Kinsta dashboard to copy the password and then I'm going to paste it inside the terminal. And there we go. We are now logged in inside our new web server. As I said before, when we log in into SSH, we will be inside the home directory of our web server. Now, I'm going to list the contents of the home directory. If you notice, there is no backups directory right now. Next, I'm going to type the pwd command to get the full path for the home directory. And I'm going to copy this path somewhere so that I don't lose it. If you remember, we also saved the full home directory path of old web host during step 5. Step 8. This is where it gets really interesting. In this step, we're going to copy the backups directory from the old web host to the new web host using the rsync command. Now, there are a ton of different ways to move your backups directory to the new web host. For example, you can use a file manager from your web host or you can use the FTP to do this. But the problem with that is, you have to first download that backups directory to your personal computer and then upload it back again to the new web host. And trust me, unless you have a very high speed internet connection, it will take you at least 3 hours to move a 3 gigabytes file. This is where asking command literally comes in. It will let us connect to a particular directory inside our old web host and copies that directory to the new web host. It is similar how Dropbox or iCloud works. And one more thing, based on how powerful your web hosts are, the rsync command moves a 3 gigabytes file in less than one minute. Isn't that great? Come on, let's do it now. rsync space dash r. Now dash r modifier will recursively copy all the nested directories. In our case, we don't need it because we only have two files but I'm habituated to it. Anyway, next, we should also connect our old web host, right? And we should also mention which directory inside it for syncing. So we need to provide the user credentials in the format of SSH, except that there will be no SSH word in the command. So I'm going to put in user account at the rate host address, colon, and the full path to the directory which we want to sync. Space, path of a directory inside the current server. And if we now hit enter, it will ask the SSH password of the old web host. So I'm going to go back to the liquid web, copy the password and paste it here. And I'm going to hit enter now. Now rsync will work its magic of copying the backups directory to the home directory of a new server. As I said before, the copying happens in less than a minute on most of the servers because Web hosting companies have blazing fast internet speed connection. And there we go. The copying is now done. Now let's verify it by listing the contents of the home directory. And if you notice, we have now a backups directory. So let's go inside it to make sure if we have the current files and file sizes. And there we go. 51 MB of database file and 3.8 GB of the WP contents directory file. So the sync is indeed successful because these are the exact file sizes that we saw on the old web server, right? Step 9. Import the database using WPCLI. Now that we have everything, let's import the database first. So I'm going to type WP DB import space 
home directory slash backups slash dnk.sql dash dash allo root and bang wp command through an error as i said before wp cli command only works if we are inside our site's wordpress root directory when it comes to kinsta the root directory for wordpress site is not public underscore html it's just public so i'm gonna type cd space home directory slash public and i'm gonna hit enter and now i'm gonna type the import command once again And there we go, this time the import is successful. Step 10. Change the URLs inside the recently imported database using WPCLI. If you notice, the URL of the website hosted on Liquid Web is completely different from the URL provided by the Kinsta. I know these URLs are not real, but please consider it as a scenario where you're migrating a site to a new web host and a new domain name completely. So, if we want to access the site after the migration is done, the URL of the domain name must be replaced with the URL of the old domain name. So I'm going to type wp search dash replace. This command will replace all the instances of the old URL with the new URL. Now I'm going to paste the old URL of the site from the liquid web. And next I'm going to paste the new URL from the Kinsta. Now, I don't want to execute the search and replace functionality yet because I'm going to give it a dry run. Dry run usually means it runs the search and replace query, but it's not going to perform any changes on the database. This way, I get to see how the database is actually getting affected. Finally, I'm going to add the allo root and hit enter. The dry run is now successful and it says there are more than 8000 plus rows that needs to be updated. Now, you might be wondering why such a huge number of replacements. This is because it's a WooCommerce website with thousands of products, orders, and media files. Anyway, now that I know what I'm dealing with, I'm going to change the URLs by running the command again. Except this time, I'm going to remove the dry run modifier completely. And there we go. The URL search and replace job is now successful and complete. Step 11. Extract the wp-content.tar file using the tar command. Now that we have imported the database and changed the URLs, it's time to extract the wp-content file. The thing is, I want to replace the current wp-content directory with the contents of the compressor file. So I'm going to put in tar-xf. Remember, dash cf is for compression and dash xf for the extraction. Then the source file that needs to be extracted, in our case, it's the wp-content.tar file inside the backups directory and the destination directory. And I'm going to hit enter to start the extraction process. This is going to take some good amount of time because we are extracting a lot of files. So I'm going to fast forward it. And there we go. We are now done extracting the file. And technically the migration is now complete too because we have imported the database and also copied the WP content directory to where it belongs. Step 12. Now let's verify the extraction of the WP content directory. I'm going to go inside the WP content directory and I'm going to list the contents of it. Next, I'm going to go inside the plugins directory and I'm going to list the contents of it too. It looks like the extraction went as expected because I can see all the plugins that are installed. Next, I'm going to inspect the uploads directory. And everything looks good in here too. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and verify the site on the front end and the admin dashboard to check if the database is imported properly. The home page is looking good and now I'm going to go ahead and verify the entire website. All the orders are intact. All the products are intact as well. And finally, the media library looks good too. Well, this is saying that the migration is 100% successful and that's exactly how you migrate a WordPress site manually.